When it came to haunting rivers, two predators from the distant past reigned supreme, each in their own respective areas. First, we have Sarcosuchus Imperator. With an enormous body but a relatively thin snout, much like the modern gharials of today, this massive beast was considered one of the largest crocodilians to ever exist. Sharing that title with other big crocodilians like Purosaurus and Dinosuchus, as no full skeletons have been found, the title of the largest crocodilian ever is still up for grabs, but Sarcosuchus is definitely in the running. Our next contender is the Titanoboa, the largest snake that ever existed on the planet. It patrolled the rivers and on rare occasions, the trees, bringing a vicious bite with its full set of hook-like teeth and a slow, constricting death to any who crossed its path. So, who would win should these titans be forced to share their freshwater hunting grounds? Let's compare the Sarcosuchus with the Titanoboa in detail so that we can better understand the respective strengths and weaknesses of these apex predators. While it's a fun subject of speculation, these titans would have never met in the past. Sarcosuchus was a creature of the mid-Cretaceous period, from 110 to 90 million years ago. By contrast, the Titanoboa appeared much later. It lived during the Paleocene era, at a modest 60 million years ago. While a subspecies of Sarcosuchus lived in South America, the biggest Sarcosuchus species, namely Sarcosuchus imperator, hunted the rivers of North Africa exclusively. Titanoboa fossils tell us that the mighty snake could be found, respectively, in the rivers of Colombia. That said, what if they did live in the same area and in close proximity? We would need to factor in all of their strengths and weaknesses to get a good idea of who might win in a titanic tussle. Let's start out with their comparative sizes. Sarcosuchus was probably slightly shorter in length, measuring in at about 40 feet, but made up for this in sheer mass, weighing in at approximately 8 tons. It was a veritable juggernaut. Titanoboa, by contrast, was probably longer in length, as this super serpent could grow to be 42 to 45 feet, but it was much lighter than the Sarcosuchus, weighing in at 1 to 1.5 tons. It was thick and ropey and well designed for constriction with a diameter of 3 feet to complement its extraordinary length. Now you might be wondering what these apex predators dined upon as they oppressed all the lesser creatures of the lakes and rivers. Sarcosuchus, while capable of larger terrestrial prey, dined mostly on turtles and fish. Mind you, the fish that we are talking about were gigantic, such as the Mawsonia, which could measure 13 to 15 feet in length. Some evidence suggests that it has also eaten dinosaurs that got too close to the water's edge. Titanoboa, however, had a much more varied diet, eating anything, absolutely anything that it could catch. Titanoboas ate birds, small crocodiles, though none as big as Sarcosuchus, and if it was not mating season, the larger females might have even devoured the males. Snakes have always been cold-blooded predators, after all. While we do not have the exact speed of the Sarcosuchus determined, consider this. A full-grown saltwater crocodile, which is about half the size of a Sarcosuchus, is capable of swimming at 15 to 18 miles per hour. Sarcosuchus was likely even a bit faster. Titanoboa was probably not quite that fast in the water, swimming at about 12 miles per hour, but it had a lot more mobility with its lighter mass and flexibility there is a good chance that it could outmaneuver the Sarcosuchus in the river if it missed on its initial attack. On land, things become more unbalanced. While most snakes can use stealth on land, the Titanoboa was simply too large. It would have trouble moving quickly whereas the Sarcosuchus, strong and armored, would move much faster on land. For the Titanoboa's sake, the Sarcosuchus had better miss with its first bite attempt, capable of a goliath bite strength of approximately 80,000 newtons, 
estimated by the shape of its skull and the study of modern crocodilians. The Sarcosuchus had a bite even stronger than the Tyrannosaurus rex. In layman's terms, the Sarcosuchus could potentially deliver its 130 nasty teeth in a gripping blow with the force of the weight of a truck. Typically, the Sarcosuchus would lay in wait beneath the waters, scanning for prey above so that it could explode from the depths and deliver this death bite. Anything that it did not bite in half immediately was likely to be drowned as the crocodile pulled it back into the river, never to be seen again. This wouldn't guarantee a win, however, as the Titanoboa could strike first with its improved mobility. While the Titanoboa could not bite as hard as the Sarcosuchus, delivering only about 2,000 to 3,000 newtons of bite force with its snapping jaws, it did have one potential edge in its favor. Titanoboa was not strictly limited to constriction attacks. That's because this mega serpent had a mouth of recurved hook-shaped teeth. This efficient dentition meant that unlike the modern anaconda or boa constrictors of our day, Titanoboa likely hunted by going for the neck first before attempting a deadly constriction. Once the Titanoboa bit down, it would be almost impossible to remove the creature as the rest of its body would be firmly wrapped around its victim in a constrictive vice as its secondary mean of taking its prey down. While the Titanoboa might possibly defeat the Sarcosuchus, it could not have eaten it as the behemoth would have been too large for even a snake of this size. As said, Titanoboa was able to eat crocodiles of its own era, but Sarcosuchus was simply too large. The snake could probably only swallow prey with a body length of around 10 to 15 feet, so it would have to settle for the thrill of the kill and finding a suitable meal elsewhere unless the Sarcosuchus was not fully grown. It is apparent that both of the hunters were apex predators, but which one was smarter? In this, they were both evenly matched, as their reptilian brains were both small and designed primarily for the functions of hunt, sleep, and repeat. So what about their natural strengths and weaknesses? Sarcosuchus was known as the Flesh Crocodile Emperor for good reason. Let's consider first its armor. Modern crocodilians have osteoderms, or armored plates, that cover their body but have a definite weakness at the neck. Sarcosuchus had no such weakness, as its armored plates covered its entire body. With armor like this, and a bite that could crush pretty much everything, you might think that it had no weaknesses, but we can think of two. Its eyesight would be the first potential weakness. Instead of moving side to side like the eyes of most crocodilians, Sarcosuchus probably had eyes that looked up and down. While this is optimal for hunting prey that gets too close to the water, this would likely leave Sarcosuchus vulnerable to a clever sneak attack. Secondly, the large beast could swim fast, but after its explosive attack from the depths to the surface of the water, it is likely that it could not move with the agility of the Titanoboa. But Titanoboa had its own weaknesses, though. While it was almost impossible to dislodge those hook teeth once they got a hold of their prey, or even to attack it while it's coiled around the body, the Snake Supreme was at a relative disadvantage on land. Its three-foot girth, as well, would also mean that one successful bite from Sarcosuchus might well split the mighty serpent in half. Titanoboa's relatively weaker bite might also have a hard time penetrating the armor of Sarcosuchus, although arguably the combination of gnashing of the throat and crushing the body might well topple the mighty crocodile in time. Both predators possess the strength of stealth, although the Titanoboa may have had the edge in this department, as it roamed about silently to sneak up on its prey, whereas the Sarcosuchus hunted like the crocodiles of today, it would sit placidly underneath the waters and snap at anything that got too close to its jaws, or explode from the depths when terrestrial prey foolishly believed that the crocodile's water was safe to drink. So which of these predators would win the fight on land or in water? Hands down, 
The Sarcosuchus is probably the true emperor of the water and the land of these two. On land, the large snake could simply be outmaneuvered due to its slow speed, and the Sarcosuchus only needs to bite the Titanoboa once. In the water, while Titanoboa could go for the throat of the Sarcosuchus, the crocodile is still defended by its osteoderm armor, and again, that mighty bite would sever the Titanoboa in two. It would simply take too much time for the Titanoboa to suffocate this giant crocodile. Sarcosuchus has the armor, the mass, better overall speed, and a bite speculated to be even stronger than the Tyrannosaurus. But what do you think? Share your opinion through the survey in the info box. Thanks for watching.